the number one dog food in the world. Best dog food in the world for my dogs. It might not be the best dog food in the world for your dogs. Best dog food in the world for your dogs is, is the one that your dogs perform the best on. So I'm sorry there's no wonder food that's good for everybody's dog. There is no one food that's just the number one food for everybody. It's gonna vary from dog to dog, breed to breed, and how active your dog is, how inactive your dog is, how old your dog is. There's a lot of variables that go into what is the best dog food for your dog. But I can guarantee you by the time I finish this video, you're gonna be more comfortable in what you are feeding your dog or on your journey to figure out what is the number one dog food for your dog. Look at this little girl, this is little baby Junebug. She's the newest addition to the Bulldog Farm. I just got her the other day. And of course, this is my boy Magilla, the little lilac gorilla. Magilla is open for stud. He'll be working in a couple months. He's at his intro fee right now, so if you're looking for stud service, reach out. BigboneBulldogs.com. Like I said, the food is gonna vary. The number one dog food is gonna vary from dog to dog. Depends on what breed it is. Depends on if it's a geriatric dog that's older. Is it a sporting dog that's very active? Is it a lazy couch dog? What kind of lifestyle does your dog live? That has a lot to do with it also. So how do you figure out what's the best dog food for you? Well, there's a few rules you need to go by. So when choosing what food is best for your dog, it can be overwhelming because there's a lot of options out there, right? So the first thing I'd recommend you doing is spend a little time online, maybe 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes, just researching. Pull up the, la the current studies. Make sure they're recent current studies on dog foods and see what they're saying. See which ones are in the top 10, see why they're there, and just read what people are saying about the different brands. So that'll kind of help you zone, zone it in. down to probably a handful of brands. Now identify what protein do you want to feed. Once you've identified what protein you want to feed your dog, when you choose a dog food and you look at those ingredients, you want to make sure that protein is the number one ingredient. The other key to choosing the number one dog food for your dog is being very aware. So you need to be very aware of what ingredients are in the food that you're going to feed protein your dog. Protein source should always be number one. In the top five ingredients, you want no corn. Why do you want to stay away from corn? Corn. Corn is a North American cereal plant that yields large kernels on a cob. Why is your dog itching its paws? Why does your dog have itchy ears? Why does your dog's ears smell? Because if you go in your pantry and you look at the ingredients, I bet you got corn in the first five ingredients. Corn, an abundance of corn can give your dog yeast issues. Yeast issues cause itchy ears, itchy paws. So, you can have corn in the food, it's okay, but you want corn to be farther down in the ingredients list. You don't want corn in the first five ingredients. That way you can stay away from having yeast issues, which is very common in bulldogs. Next, you wanna identify what fillers are in the food that you're choosing. Is it rice, is it potatoes? Because Just like the protein is a, is a major factor, the fillers can be a major factor. A lot of dogs don't like potatoes. They're red, they're white, they're brown. They get that way underground. Some dogs do fine on potatoes. Not only do you have to choose what protein is going to be the best for your dog, but what filler also. So you need to be very aware of the ingredients that you choose to feed your dog. Now when you start doing it, give it a solid three, four months at least. Don't just feed it for two weeks, a month, and then switch off to the next one because you don't like the results. Give it a solid three to let four that months. food cycle and really see how your dog is doing on it because if you are just jumping around from food to food every couple weeks now you're really going to have issues and you're never going to figure out what the best food is for your dog and you're just going to cause a lot of problems next you want to take in effect the lifestyle of your dog do you have a lazy couch dog do you live in an apartment and only take your dog out to poop and pee every day do you have a big house with a property and your dog runs free every day do you have a sporting dog are you an active lifestyle you and your dog go hiking every weekend whatever is fine but identify what lifestyle your dog because has. Because you need to take that into account when choosing the best food for your dog. If you have a really active dog, you need a higher protein count, a higher fat count. If you have an inactive dog, you're gonna want a lower protein, a lower fat count. Too much protein can be a problem sometimes. If you have an obese dog where you need a lower calorie diet, you have a geriatric dog that needs more minerals and vitamins. So these are things you wanna identify in your dog to help you choose the best food. And whatever kibble you do choose to feed, you need to make sure you pair it up with a good multivitamin and a solid fish oil. A multivitamin and a fish oil mixed with 
the proper kibble is the best food you can feed your dog. This multivitamin right here, $35. Probably gonna last you two months. This fish oil, $20. Probably gonna last you about two months. That's nothing. You guys spend $10 on your Starbucks every day. And you love your dog, right? I know you do, that's why you're watching this. So that's a very small investment for what you're gonna get back out of it. You're gonna save your money on vet bills and your dog is going to thrive on it. Lots of omegas in here that your dog needs. A fish oil can prevent arthritis. A simple fish oil can prevent arthritis. Benefits so much for joint health and a good balanced multivitamin. Your dog will really thrive from the right kibble with a good multivitamin and a good fish oil. Both of these right here, I wouldn't push them if I didn't believe in them. You can find them right here. I wouldn't push them if I didn't believe in them. You can find them on my site, Big Bone Breeder Supply. Link in the bio. Make sure you guys go check this out. Make sure you get some of this. When, once you identify what brand food you want to feed your dog, you need to pair it up with a good multivitamin, and this is the one. There's some other trash on the market. I've used other ones that I didn't see results. I've seen results with this. I've seen the results, and there's documented results on using fish oils. Look it up. You don't believe me? Do some research on what fish oils do to your dog's health. So we've all heard about grain-free. Grain-free kills dogs. Stay away from grain-free diets. You do not want to do the grain-free diet. I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of trolls down here in these comments telling me I'm wrong. No, I'm right. Grain-free lacks the amino... A grain-free diet lacks the proper amino acids that the heart needs for proper heart health. Without those proper amino acids, your dog is going to develop something called DCM. You don't want to feed a grain-free diet. And no, it has not been disproven. There are lots of studies still currently going on trying to disprove this, but those studies are not complete. So far, what is fact is that the grain-free diets lack the amino acids that you need for proper cardiac health. So steer clear of the grain-free diets. Now you have allergies. Allergies is the biggest thing people talk about with food. If you haven't had an allergy panel done on your dog, do not tell me your dog is allergic. Stop saying your dog is allergic to chicken because you heard your neighbor say it. Stop saying your dog is allergic to grains because your vet suggested it. If you haven't had an allergy panel done on your dog, stop assuming your dog is allergic to these things. Now you're just blindly trying things without accurate information. If you think your dog has allergies, spend the money on an allergy panel, figure out what exactly your dog is allergic to. Figure out what your dog is allergic to, make sure it's not in the ingredient list. It's just that simple. But stop running around here thinking your dog is allergic to everything just based on what somebody else said. That's just going to lead you in circles and you're never going to find the number one dog food for your dog. If you're already feeling more comfortable about what you are feeding your dog or about this new journey you're going to take on to find the number one dog food for your dog, please hit that like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following me on all my socials, Big Bone Bulldogs on TikTok, my alternate TikTok, The Bulldog Breeder, my Instagram, Big Bone Bulldogs. That one's down, unfortunately. My backup is Big Bone Bulldogs underscore DB. And of course, always BigBoneBulldogs.com. You're going to want to be following me on all my socials. I go live on my TikTok almost every day in the mornings and the evenings with my dogs out. And I got a thousand square foot puppy playground I built for them. I'm currently building them, this state of the art bulldog facility. And I go live when I whelp a lot of my litters. So if you got TikTok, you need to be following me, Big Bone Bulldogs. Instagram, Big Bone Bulldogs underscore DB. And if you've watched this video this long, you better be subscribed to my YouTube channel because it's only going to get better. We are in construction, as you can see. First thing I did is spray insulation, walls and ceiling, even the back of the garage doors to give, my, to give it the R20 factor, best insulation factor, three inches of closed cell foam. I got not one, but two two-ton AC units. If one fails, the other will keep my dogs alive. I got poured concrete stone. None of those prefab wire bullshit that'll rust and cut my dogs with sharp edges. We got self-draining poured concrete stalls, hurricane proof, no, no baby gate doors. We got custom welded doors with glass inserts. This is all gonna be covered with stone over here. We have a custom whelping area. These will fold down, giving me access to my drop crates. I'll have three three by three drop crates in here where the puppies can pee and poop and stay as clean as possible. I can clean everything right out to the drain. 10 stalls. Behind me will be my lab area. We got Blue Pantera, my Italian Mastiff, Cane Corso. 
imported from Serbia. All the stalls have doggy door access leading out to the outside. Where they have 10 foot runs, fresh air, fresh water. Use the restroom as they like. And outside is the puppy playground I told you guys about. And then there's the raw diet. Raw diet is not for beginners. The raw diet is a very advanced diet. The raw diet needs to be a balanced raw diet. These are omnivores, not carnivores. They need more than just raw meat. I will say that a well-balanced raw diet might be one of the best foods for your dog, but it's a very advanced diet that most people cannot handle. So I would not recommend taking it on. A raw diet, there's a process to putting your dog on it. There's a process to keeping your dog on it. You can't just run out of food and grab a bag or whatever. Food has to be kept a certain way. The food has to be served a certain way. Dog can't just leave the food in the bowl and let it gain bacteria. The dog needs to eat the food right away and it needs to be balanced with other, vitamin, with other vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that a dog requires other than just raw meat. So yes, a dog can thrive from a raw diet, but it's very advanced and there's a lot of things that can go wrong that you shouldn't risk unless you're truly ready to take on that challenge. All right, so real quick rundown. First, you're gonna to wanna to look into some current studies to narrow down the different brands into a small handful of brands. If you think your dog has allergies, you need to get an allergy panel done, see what your dog's allergic to, and, and make sure it's not in the ingredients. If your dog's a breeding dog, you're gonna to wanna to stay away from phytoestrogens. Make sure the phytoestrogens are lower in the ingredient list. Always make sure corn is lower in the ingredient list, not in the top five. Identify which protein you do wanna feed your dog. Make sure that protein is the number one ingredient. And be aware of all the ingredients and of the fillers. Is it rice or is it potato? What filler am I using with what protein? Be aware of the ingredients and be aware of how your dog reacts on the ingredients. And don't go switching foods around every week or two. Give it a solid three to four month trial before switching foods. Do identify what kibble is gonna work best for your dog. Make sure you're adding a multivitamin that you can get at Big Bone Breeder Supply and a fish oil that you can get at Big Bone Breeder Supply. Link in the bio, I wouldn't steer you guys wrong. I use this myself and I've had amazing results with it. Fish oils prevent arthritis. Do your research, you don't always gotta believe me, but I appreciate that you do. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see y'all next time.